everyone, my name is Jeff Rolka. I had a question about mask resonance. And this is one of those confusing vocal terms because there's a lot of terms that refer to mask resonance or the singer's formant or point or projection. And all of these things are interrelated into an aspect of our tone production. So I've got a very quick tip for you regarding how to get that started and also one of my best practices for developing, cultivating, and also kind of adjusting the resonance of it. Before I dive in, thank you if you've chosen to subscribe. Subscribing is the best way to be informed about the opportunities that are here for you to ask questions and learn about singing. So community questions where you can post a question and I answer it in the video or live events where I answer questions on the fly, which is super fun. Um, all of that is available to you when you subscribe and get notifications. There are of course other ways to support my channel. Those are in the description. Mask resonance is an integral part of our sound. If we didn't talk with mask resonance, we wouldn't sound very, you know, it's cool. I'm not saying that's a bad sound, but it might be a moment of your song as opposed to the whole thing. Um, unless you're doing a character part or something to that effect. But closing off the side of passage entirely is not really an option for us unless we want to sound that is D nasal, where I'm lifting my soft palate and I'm closing off the nose so that air cannot access the sinus passages. That being said, too much of it, and that becomes undesirable too. So it's a matter of retaining vocal fold adduction and having the right amount of blend of said resonance. And again, mask resonance, singer's formant, point. Uh, those, those are just some of the terms that get used to talk about this particular aspect of our tone production. Now, one way to get started with this and you've probably heard about this if you've dived into vocal studies at all, is the smile or the inner smile technique where you provide us with a very big toothy grin. The key element of that are the cheeks, getting the cheeks up and off of the sinus cavities. This also typically has the effect of lifting the soft palate. If you're not sure what the soft palate is or where it is, take your tongue, start at your front, top teeth and then start working your way back and if you press into the roof of your mouth you'll find the bony bit that's where all the peanut butter gets stuck unless you're allergic don't eat it if you're allergic and then at some point you'll find this ridge and then it gets really soft and squishy and that the squishy bit is your soft palate and the height of that tissue has a lot to do with the singer's formant this mask resonance and the flow of air, both within and beyond the aural cavity as it passes into the sinus cavity too. So the inner smile can be a good way to get a feel for the musculature and how it changes that internal shape. One of my favorite exercises that manipulates this flow of air is the NG sound and it's in several of the videos on the channel. It's not terribly difficult to find. The key practice here is to start it in a very comfortable range of your voice. Later on, it can be very, very helpful when working on maintaining consistent resonance across the secundo passaggio. So, comfortable range for tenors might be somewhere in here. And the sound is entirely through the nose. The soft palate is lifted. The rear of the tongue is lifting and closing off the flow of air from my mouth. So my mouth is not being allowed to have air flowing out of it. It's all coming out my nose. This isolates this resonant frequency and allows us to play with it. So we can try more. We can try less. We can try little or none. And when we learn to manipulate those resonances, we can then put it in context and see how we like it. So, 
if I remove it entirely. My nose is still open, but I have removed as much of that forint as possible, and that might be very useful at some times. A more middle-of-the-road neutral tone production might be there. If you want to really project, uh, in particular, this is quite appropriate, I think, for theater folk, more. That formant really cuts through the textures of the music that you will find in, for that matter, orchestras, bands, pit orchestras, things like that. That 2 to 5k frequency really comes through. And so you can manipulate it, find what you need, and then practice it with the NG exercise by starting with the NG, getting that balance that you're looking for, and then releasing into your vowels. So, when your practice moves to incorporating the secondo passaggio, often the temptation can be to go for a sound that's further back. But the problem with this is that if I were to sing that with a vowel, following that same kind of resonance profile, you can hear there's a color change as I go from below my registration event, my secondo passaggio, my break, to above, and the vowel has that color change as well. And so the NG noise is really helpful in getting over that feeling that something feels funny when I keep the buzz the same. So if I do it where the buzz is the same, I can really feel this sense of registration event. But ironically, my voice is more consistent. Again, when we allow for that buzz to be more consistently buzzy in the NG sound, we will get more consistent tone quality across the registration event. So those are the ranges for the tenor range vocalist. Baritones, you might find yourself starting from here, or maybe even here to start with, and then eventually moving into this range, to that range to make sure you're covering the secondo passaggio. Sopranos, you may find that you need to do it here initially to work on the primo passaggio. And then you can work on scales and exercises from here to there to make sure that you're covering the secondo passaggio. Mezzos, you're in that general vicinity as well. Starting here, just below the secondo passaggio, to there, right above it. Contraltos, alto range vocalists, your secondo passaggio is there, so you might find starting here and then ascending to there. And there's lots and lots of exercises on the channel. You can even find the NG sound in a lot of them, but in truth, you can do that NG noise with any pattern. If you find that you're hearing some subtle changes in the tone quality of your voice as you are transiting your secondo passaggio. I hope this helps. My name's Jeff. If you've got questions or comments, please drop them in the comments below or find me on Twitter or join me at an event or at Community Questions when the opportunity presents itself. Again, you'll find out about that most easily by subscribing and ringing the old bell. Thank you so much for watching. Take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing, and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.